Hello, welcome to Frank Nutt's Sewing Machines YouTube channel. I'm Claire and I'm going to show you how to free machine embroider. If you've never had a go at this or have been put off when you've tried to do this at home, I'm going to run through a few tips which hopefully will set you on the road to free machine embroidering. So this is what you need today. Um, I'm actually going to use a wooden hoop to put some fabric in and the reason I'm going to do that is because if I had a single layer of fabric and I tried to free machine embroider, what can happen as you try to machine embroider, it will just be moving all over the place. So when you have a single layer of fabric, pop it in a hoop and these good old fashioned wooden ones are great because you can get the fabric really nice and tight. So what I'm doing is taking the inner hoop out and with the hoop with the screw on, I'm placing a piece of medium weight calico. If you've got some curtain lining or something like that, that's great fabric to have a little practice on. You don't want anything too stretchy or anything too thin. So pop it in your hoop and pull that up so that it's really nice and tight. You'll notice I'm pulling it up at right angles and that just stops the inner hoop from flipping out. What that does is it makes a really nice tight canvas so that when we're working like this, it really is easy to free machine embroider. So what else do we need to do? Well, I've put some thread in, and the thread I'm using today is Madeira Threads Classic 40. It's a beautiful viscose thread, and it's absolutely lovely. It's got this gorgeous sheen to it. But I don't want you to feel that you have to rush out and buy viscose thread. If you've got some decent sewing thread at home, a decent polyester or a cotton, then you can use that. Just pop the same thread top and bottom. Now, free machine embroidery is unlike conventional sewing, you need to actually lower the feed dogs or drop the teeth. And on this machine, it's just a case of pressing a button like that and down they go. Other machines, you may have a little slidey thing down here or actually in the bobbin area, there may be a little lever. The best thing to do is to check your book or your manual. There are some brands of machine where you can't lower the teeth at all, but what you'll find is in the, your bag of bits that you've never looked at since you bought your machine is a little plate. So just pop those over your teeth and uh, it will actually keep the teeth out of the way. So once they're dropped, you need to sort out your machine embroidery foot. So the machine embroidery foot has different names and they can look um, well, they, they can look like this really. We've got a variety here and some of them are clear, some of them are metal, some of them are open-toed and some of them are enclosed. And really that's just the main difference. They're either going to be open-toed or enclosed. Open-toed ones are great for being able to see where you're going. If you're actually couching down lots of layers and textures or perhaps doing some free motion quilting, then having an enclosed one actually helps with that. But they can look like this and they all differ with different models. So it can get a bit confusing when you have a look round. They are all different, but they do the same, same thing. So I'm gonna use this one. This is a Benina Foot 24 and I'm popping that on. And just to let you know, the, the needle that I'm using today is just a universal size 80. Size 80 is great for just sewing through a single thickness of fabric. If I was sewing through various layers or thicker fabric, then I would use a bigger needle like a size 90. The stitch length on my machine, it doesn't matter what it's set to because when I'm actually free machine embroidery, I am actually controlling the stitch length. It's how quickly I sew with my foot and how quickly I move my hoop that determines the stitch length. So I'll show you what I mean. So when you start, you need to get your embroidery hoop actually, oops, nearly catching the needle there. You need to actually get your embroidery hoop under your foot. Now, if you're doing this at home and you think, well, it's not sliding underneath easily, what I suggest you do is put your hand under the take-up lever and just push the lever up again and you'll probably find that your machine has got a double lift that will lift up again and you'll be able to slide your embroidery hoop under easily. So once you've done that, you need to bring your bobbin thread up through the calico so that you've got it 
up here and you can see where it is. And the reason that we do that with free machine embroidery is because we stitch in lots of different directions and we don't want the bobbin thread to get tangled. So on this machine, I'm just going to lower the foot, needle in, needle up, and I'm just going to pull my bobbin thread up. So once you've done that, just pop your needle in again, your presser foot is lowered, and you're ready to start sewing. So naturally, when you start, you're a bit terrified, to be honest, and you'll probably find yourself going quite slowly. But if you go quite slowly, what can happen is that you get big stitches. And it's also a little bit awkward and angular. Now, my tip is just go a little bit faster with your foot. You've probably heard the expression fast foot, slow hand. So just go a little bit faster. And already you see how much smoother that is. And you can do all sorts of things. What I'm going to do first of all is just cut that end off as well because that's just getting in the way. So you can go from up and down, side to side. And that's really exciting. Just go all over the place. You can actually do little designs. And of course, you can write your name. Which is great fun. If I go really fast with my foot, but I don't move my hoop very fast, look what happens. So I'm going hell for leather, and I'm not moving my hoop very much, and you get quite a wobbly stitch. This has been very good natures, and, and neither the thread or the fabric has torn or snapped. But if you don't want that wobbly line, you need to either slow down or move your hoop faster. So if I did want to sew that fast, I would need to just move my hoop a lot quicker. And that's just a bit stressful though, it's a bit uncontrollable. So don't go that fast, especially when you're starting off. Just go at a more sensible speed. And of course the other thing you can do, as well as straight stitch with machine embroidery, is doing zigzag. So if I were to do a, a leaf, for example, and I wanted to fill it in, if I set it to zigzag, so I'm just going to choose zigzag, and at the moment my stitch width has come up with a 3.6 measurement. I can either decrease that or increase it. Let's go, I don't know, let's go a bit fatter. Let's make it a 4.8. Now if I move my work slowly, I'll get a satin stitch. But if I move it quite quickly, you actually get a bit of a wiggly stitch and that's quite effective if you're wanting to to fill in do a bit of texture for backgrounds and things like that so that's it that's straight stitch and that's zigzag and that's really just how easy free machine embroidery is so I hope you can have a go and I hope you've liked this video so please remember to subscribe so you'll see more videos and give us a thumbs up if you liked it and if you do fancy coming on a course I actually do some workshops here at Frank Nuts. Please have a look at my website, which is claremuir.co.uk, and you can see the details there. Thanks so much. Bye.